Hi, I'm Dr. David Geyer, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine specialist, and I provide education and commentary on all sorts of sports and exercise injuries and injury treatments and injury prevention for athletes and active people, probably much like yourself, so that you can stay healthy and perform your best. Now, I've been writing articles online, recording videos, podcasts for almost six years now, and I've gotten thousands and thousands of questions. And one of the most common topics that I get questions are about stress fractures. If you go to my posts on tibial stress fractures or navicular stress fractures of the foot or femoral neck stress fractures, if you search those and go to the bottom of the post, you will see hundreds of comments and almost all of those comments are questions about stress fractures. So I think it's really worth talking about. Now there's so many risk factors that we talk about with stress fractures. By and large in the sports medicine world, you know, people that play sports or exercise, we're talking about overtraining or overuse, basically doing too much too soon without enough time to rest. So it may be, you know, somebody that's training for a 10K that's never run before, but the 10K is in two weeks and they try to ramp up their training real quick, or it could be a marathon, but they've only given themselves two months to get from running 5Ks to a marathon. They rapidly increase their mileage every week they get hurt, you know, it turns out to be a stress fracture and they miss that race or miss that complica uh, competition. But it's not just overtraining. You could be um, you know, not eating enough. It could be your shoes are worn out. There's all sorts of reasons that you can get a stress fracture. But one of the ones that I think is at least worth talking about is not having good bone density. Now, when we think of bad bone density or inadequate bone density, we tend to think about people as they get older. You know, the common group that this comes to mind would be, you know, the women going through menopause or maybe they're after menopause. And absolutely, you know, they want to stay active. And this is true in men too in their 50s and 60s and 70s. They want to keep running and lifting weights. And you don't want to necessarily give those up, but you do your concern about that, you know, basically repetitive pounding on the pavement that you get with jogging. If those bones are weak, yeah, they're probably a little more likely to suffer an injury. So it's worth finding out you know, what your bone density is. So go to your doctor, get a bone density study, find out if your bone density is good, or maybe you need calcium or vitamin D, or maybe you actually, you know, your doctor suggests some medication to help with your bone density. But another group of people that ought to consider finding out about bone density, potentially doing something about it, are people that have already suffered a stress fracture. And I don't mean just your, your older adults, I mean any age group. We know that a decent percentage of stress fractures actually occur in high school age, college age athletes. We see it in the young members of the military as well that do some repetitive activity. And it's possible, you know, in your teenage years uh, to have inadequate bone density. And so, you know, somebody that suffered a stress fracture, especially somebody that suffered you know, a couple stress fractures, you at least entertain the thought of getting a bone density study because again, if you can correct the problems with weak bones, potentially you eliminate at least that one part of the risk of a stress fracture. If it's related to overuse and overtraining like it very often is, especially in your younger athletes, uh, you've got to correct those problems too. But knowing the, you know, what the bone density levels that you have are, and if you need to do something about it, you know, you take a supplement or to even take a medication to get that bone density as good as you can, that can be a good idea. Now, have you suffered a stress fracture and you know, was it related to poor bone density or was it a training issue? I'd love to hear your thoughts, your experiences, and I bet other people that are watching this video dealing with a stress fracture probably would love to hear what you think as well. So below this video, leave your comments, leave your experience. I'd love to read them and again, I think other people would too. And if you know somebody dealing with a stress fracture but they want to get back to sports or exercise, I would really appreciate it if you'd share this video with with him or with her. Hopefully it helps them, you know, have a better understanding of what they're dealing with. Maybe they, they can get their bone density checked out as well. Now, if you like more videos like this and you want more information on sports and exercise injuries and injury treatments and injury prevention, subscribe to my video channel. I record a couple of these videos every single week and I'd love to deliver those directly to you. 
And finally, there's so many resources on ways to stay healthy and perform your best that I only share by email. So go to my website, drdavidgeyer.com, enter your name and your email at the very top of the page, and I will deliver those directly to you. I look forward to connecting with you that way as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'm curious again about your thoughts about bone density and stress fractures, and I look forward to seeing you right here next time.